In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform trigonometric integration. Now, some of the integrals we're going to talk about have many, many steps. And if I show you every step, it's going to be very difficult to follow. I really think the clearest way to present this is to just draw an outline and ask you to fill in some of the steps on your own. That means that as you're watching the video, you're going to be wanting to have pencil and paper with you, you're going to want to stop the video and you're going to make sure you could fill in all the steps in between and try some of the problems. For example, right now I'm talking to you and also these two guys on the screen are having a conversation. Can you follow both at the same time? No. So you're probably going to want to stop the video and read what they were saying. So stop the video now uh, before we go on to the next frame. Now here are the six integrals that were being discussed. Some of these will fall into the category of integrals we're trying to work on today, but some of them are actually simpler than they appear. They're integrals that you should already immediately know how to do, and to figure out which those are, think about how you would write each of these integrands just using the sine and cosine functions. So pause the video and see if you could figure out which ones are simpler than they appear. All right, the answer is this one, which is just the integral of cosine of x dx, and this one, which is the integral of secant of x times tangent of x dx, which is the derivative of the secant function. When you have integrals of the form of this one, where you have powers of sine and cosine, you can't really cancel any sines or cosine, and when you have integrals of a form similar to this, powers of secant and tangent, also in both of these, the cosine's in the denominator, so you're not going to have any cancellation of sine and cosine. And uh, there's one more example, uh, cosecant and cotangent. Other combinations won't show up very often, because they can often be rewritten as an integral in powers of secant and in tangent, or an integral in powers of cosecant and cotangent, or an integral in powers of cosine and sine. Therefore, there are three categories of integrals that we will discuss today. The first category is integrals of the form sine to the m power of x times cosine to the n power of x dx. The second form is powers of secant and tangent, and the third form is powers of cosecant and cotangent. Now actually, this third form turns out to be the same procedures as the second form. So category 3 and category 2 aren't really two different categories, and really there are only two categories of integrals. So on to category 1, the integrals of the form sine to the m of x, cosine to the n of x, dx. I will illustrate the different cases by giving you an example. Case A, what if m or n is odd. If one of those is odd, for example, integral of sine squared of x times cosine cubed of x, where m is 2 and n is 3, here n is odd. In this case, you can take out a factor of cosine x, because cosine x dx is the same as d sine x. And you can then rewrite the entire remainder of the integrand in terms of the sine function because cosine squared of x is 1 minus sine squared of x. In other words, I'm using a Pythagorean identity to change the expression in cosine into an expression involving sine. I can do that because the power of the cosine is even after I take out 1 for cosine of x dx. And then the resulting integral can be integrated uh, to get u cubed over 3 minus uh, u to the fifth over 5, and so on. So that's the first example of case A. Another example would be integral of sine to the fifth x cosine to the sixth x dx. Now I have, I have m is odd and n is even, so we're still in the case where m or n is odd. So I'm going to take out a factor of sine of x because sine of x dx is negative d cosine of x. So, so, see, I put this negative sign here to account for the negative in the negative d cosine of x. And then I have an even power of sine remaining, so I could use that 
to rewrite the sines in terms of cosine. Sine to the fourth of x is the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared quantity squared. And again, I have it written in terms of u. And again, I can uh, integrate that using the power rule and rewrite everything in terms of u as cosine of x. What if m and n are both odd, as in the case of integral of sine of x cosine of x dx? Well, in that case, you have two different ways of integrating. You can use the fact that uh, m is odd and integrate sine of x d sine of x, or the fact that n is odd and integrate negative cosine of x d cosine of x, and you get two different answers. One half sine of x sine squared of x plus c and negative a half cosine squared of x plus c. So, uh, you may remember having discussed this case before. How could it be that this one integral gives two different solutions? Are these two functions the same function? No, they're not. Do you remember the resolution of this paradox? The answer is those two values of c. They're not really the same number. We need to call them c1 and c2. And they differ by a half. That's case A. That's how we deal with the situation when m or n is odd. Now we want to go on to the second case. What if both m and n are even? So an example of that would be the integral of cosine squared of x dx. Now cosine squared of x may look problematic until you realize that using the power reduction formula it can be rewritten. And here's a quick overview of how to derive the power reduction formula. But uh, you could also remember that cosine squared of x equals 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2x. Also, there's a corresponding power reduction formula for sine squared of x. And this power reduction formula turns the integral into a form that does not have an even power of the cosine. And when we integrate that, we get x over 2 plus 1 quarter sine of 2x plus c. Let's look at another example of m and n are even. What if we have both m and n are 2? Here, in this case, we have the same power of m and n. So we can use the fact that sine of 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. And we can immediately turn it into an integral of sine squared of x dx, which is done in the same way as the integral of cosine squared of x, except now the argument is 2x instead of x. So we have different coefficients. A third example would be sine squared of x times cosine to the fourth of x dx. Now there are many ways of approaching this, but I think the simplest way is to rewrite sine squared of x and cosine squared of x both in terms of cosine of 2x. And when you multiply out these binomials, you get the integral of 1 eighth plus 1 eighth cosine of 2x minus 1 eighth cosine squared of 2x minus 1 eighth cosine cubed of 2x. That's not that hard to do if you start out by recognizing that you have a product of a difference times one of these factors being the sum, and you have a difference of squares. And now you could integrate each of those terms using methods we already talked about. 1 eighth, of course, is 1 eighth x. The integral of cosine 2x is elementary. The integral of cosine squared of x is done by changing the cosine squared into a half uh, plus a half cosine of 4x. And then the cosine cubed integral is done by taking out one factor of cosine of 2x and using it uh, cosine of 2x dx as one half d sine of 2x. Then we rewrite the remaining cosine squared of 2x as 1 minus sine squared of 2x using the Pythagorean relation. And when, when those are integrated, then we have uh, a couple of terms that combine to simplify, leaving us with 1 16th x minus 1 64th sine of 4x plus 1 48th sine cubed of 2x plus c. On to category 2, integrals of the type secant to the m of x, tan to the n of x. Now the first case, what if n, the power of the tangent function, is odd?
for example, the integral of secant to the fifth of x tan to the third of x dx. In this case, you can take out a factor of secant of x times tangent of x because secant x tan x dx is d secant x. And now you have an integral in terms of secant, so you have to change the tan squared of x using a Pythagorean identity, tan squared is equal to secant squared minus 1. So this becomes an integral of the form u to the fourth times u squared minus 1 du, and you can integrate it using the power rule for integration. That's how you do anything where n is odd. Case 2, what if m is even? For example, what if you have the integral of secant to the fourth of x tan squared of x dx? In that case, you may take out a factor of secant squared of x because secant squared of x dx is d tangent of x, and then, again, you're going to have to write the secant part in terms of tangent by using that same Pythagorean identity. So it becomes an integral of the form that allows you to use power rule, and you can integrate it that way. Now, of course, sometimes n is odd and m is even, so similarly to the cases with the powers of sine and cosine, you may have a choice of which strategy to use to integrate. And you'll get two different answers, and they'll look like they're not the same function, but actually it'll turn out they differ by a constant. So that takes care of cases 1 and 2. Case 3, what if neither of those is true? What if m is odd and n is even? For example, what if we're integrating secant of x, where m is 1 and n is 0? This is actually, it, it looks pretty simple, uh, but it's actually a very difficult integral, and it requires a clever trick. So watch this very carefully, because this is a pretty cool trick, and I think you'll enjoy it. We're going to take the secant function, and we're going to multiply it by 1 in the form secant of x plus tangent of x over secant of x plus tangent of x. What does that do? Well, when you distribute to the numerator, you'll notice that the two terms in the numerator are derivatives. In fact, they're the derivatives of the two things in the denominator. So if you take them and put them in the other order, then it's easier to see that the derivative of secant of x is right up here, and the derivative of tangent of x is right up here, and we now have an integral of the form where there, there's a function in the denominator and its derivative in the numerator. So this is a du over u form integral, and we can integrate it You're getting natural log of absolute value of secant of x plus tan x plus c. And that is the antiderivative of the secant function. And that's probably something you're going to have to remember. But if you don't memorize the antiderivative, hopefully you'll remember that trick. Now, continuing with case 3, what if, what if we look at the example where m is 3 and n is 0, the integral of secant cubed of x dx? In this case, you can take out a factor of secant squared of x dx, and you get something that looks like you want to use integration by parts, the integral of secant of x d tangent of x. So this will be equal to, from the integration by parts formula, the integral of, uh, will be secant x tan x, minus the integral of tangent of x d secant of x. And d secant of x, remember, is going to be secant x tan x dx. Now, once you get to this part, you have the tangent squared function that could be rewritten in terms of secants, because tangent squared of x is secant squared of x minus 1. So that, sec that integral turns into a pair of integrals that are powers of secant, and notice that we now have a secant cubed of x on the right side. So if we add that to both sides, we get two integrals of secant cubed of x dx, and we can then divide by two. And we also want to replace the integral of secant of x with the result that we already found on the last page, and we get our answer. The integral of secant cubed of x dx is one-half of secant x tan x plus natural log of absolute value of secant of x tan of x plus c. And all higher powers of secant of x, all higher odd powers of secant of x, can be integrated in a similar way, with a combination of integration by parts 
and a Pythagorean identity. So, the next thing I want you to think about is uh, how would you integrate cosecant of x dx? I gave you a hint. Everything that we did with secant of x and tangent of x will work for cosecant of x and cotangent of x. It's just that sometimes there will be negative signs that make things a little bit different, but you can probably figure out how to do that on your own.